Hello YouTube, Blearside17 here, but you can just call me Travis, and welcome back for another collection update. Uh, before we get started here, uh, I was recently talking to uh, Andrew, Andrew Valina, uh, who probably, many of you probably know, I'll leave a link to his channel, you should check him out if you don't know him. Uh, we were talking about uh, the band Exhumed a bit, and I mentioned to him uh, the copy of Slaughter Cult that I had was a saw blade shaped disc, and he wanted me to show that, so I told him I would just do that. So, Andrew here is that saw blade disc pretty rad there's also a vinyl record that also is a saw blade shaped for the same album so yeah anyway that's that i'm gonna turn this up because this should be louder better all right in the background we're listening to uh awesome release from this year one of my favorites uh no quarter uh from toledo steel Awesome heavy metal band out of uh, England. All right. Uh, yeah, let's just right off the bat. Uh, let's do a, a big, a big, big digression. Uh, first up, let's talk about uh, Immortals, Northern Chaos Gods. All right. So, uh, super excited about this release. Uh, like I said, big digression here. I want I want to give a full context of of my of all my thoughts going into this release. So, Mortal for me, a band. Uh, by the time I had gotten around to listening to them, uh, you know, the, the album uh, Sons of Northern Darkness had come out. They they uh, you know disbanded or whatever they considered themselves, and uh, and so I uh, it was at the time where like you downloaded like single tracks as opposed to like full albums and. Uh, and the first song that I ever listened to by Immortal was the song Antarctica on the album Sons of Northern Darkness. And uh, I was immediately just enthralled with the song. I loved it. Downloaded a few more tracks. And uh, yeah, I became, became an Immortal fan. And uh, slowly went about picking up all the material. Uh, was into all of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, as, as, I started to, as I started to complete uh, the discography of Immortal... Uh, the sort of timeline of members and, and what they did in the band uh, sort of uh, started to create, uh, what we'll just say, like pre preferences in terms of what's, what material of theirs I like the most. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about the fact of when uh, Demon Oz could no longer uh, play guitar full time in the band and Abbott took over their guitar playing duties. Uh, that first album where that occurred. Uh, Hold out here. Take a look at it. Cause... No, it's gotta be the last one. So yeah, here's the two, the two in question. Uh, Blizzard Beast is the last one that had Demon Oz on guitar, and then at the heart of Winter, or as my copy says, I'm sure people know this already, but uh, at the heat of winter. Anyway, uh, this is the first album that featured uh, Abbott on guitars, and, uh, and I, got, I gotta say, for me personally, uh, I really I really prefer the uh, Abbott on guitar era of Immortal. I really just love, he has a really like heavy metal thrashiness to his riffing that obviously I really enjoy. Uh, that's not to say that I don't like the Demon Oz on guitar era, because I do. Mortal just in general has a fantastic discography. They're one of my favorite bands. Probably uh, top five, definitely top 10. If we're talking just metal, definitely top five. Uh, just just an awesome, awesome band. But you know, like I said, uh, the Abathon guitar era is the stuff that I sort of generally enjoyed more. And that includes, uh, I'm blanking on the title now, the one that they released, uh, All Shall Fall, yeah, All Shall Fall, that one, I, I enjoy, this one is less popular, I feel like, to most people, but I like that one too, just the, the Abbott on guitar era, uh, was what I want to get, get across, is, is, is what I prefer. So, uh, obviously, fast forward, uh, many years, the band hasn't really done anything, they get into a legal battle over the ownership of the name. Uh, for me personally, you know, I, I could see this. I could obviously see uh, both uh, sides of the band's arguments. Uh, probably a little biased 
intentionally sort of sided with Abbott just because, uh, you know, he was writing the material the whole time. Uh, not, not solely, but, you know, a, a, a good deal of it. And, uh, and uh, that wasn't the, the case for Demon Eyes. And Hork sort of was a, you know, obviously Healy came in. I think actually Blizzard Beast was, uh, this was his first, uh, time into the band when, was this one with Hork. Uh, you know, him, him being, uh, on Demon Aside was sort of a factor too, but, uh, you know, it was sort of a Demon Oz versus the Abbott thing, because they were both, obviously, the band ones that started the band. Uh, like I said, uh, might have been biased, but, uh, I sort of, uh, sided with Abbott, I guess. Uh, as, as we all know, uh, Abbott was the one who lost, uh, Demon Eyes and Hork were granted the Immortal band name, and, uh, yeah, that's that. Abbott released his release solo album. Uh, a lot of people are kind of not into it as much. Uh, I, I like it. It's good. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I didn't really know what to to think now that we're kind of coming full circle now. I wasn't really sure what to think of this. Uh, a few years ago, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, Demon Oz released a solo album that was sort of uh, heavy metal, uh, Viking metal-ish sounding stuff. I really liked that album. Uh, sort of thought if uh, this album was anything like that, that I would probably be pretty happy, even if that really wasn't uh, very immortally. Though, you know, I'm not super, super out of the realm of being the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, just wasn't really sure what to think of this. Uh, not into the, the album art. Uh, it was kind of meh for me. Uh, the song titles... Uh, are fine, but almost seems sort of a parody of, of Immortal, uh, which, I don't know, Immortal is sort of a, a parody of themselves anyway, so I'm not really sure if that even matters. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, that sort of uh, leads me in to hopefully uh, you have a good background of, of uh, what I was thinking coming into this. I uh, wasn't really sure, uh, but I uh, was excited to hear uh, what they uh, what they wanted to put out, and you got, I gotta tell you, this album rules. This album freaking rules. Can you rip off your own band? Because that's what this sounds like. It sounds like a band who is trying to rip off Immortal and is doing an awesome job at it. Like Attic doing King Diamond, or Cannabis Corpse doing Cannibal Corpse. This sounds like a band that's just ripping off Immortal, but it's actually Demon Eyes and Horror, so it's not. Like, there's literally, throughout this whole album, there are points when I just think of other Immortal albums, like throughout their whole entire discography, uh, from the first one, Diab Diabolical Fall and Mysticism, all the way through All Shall Fall. Even, uh, there's a little bit of time when I can hear, what, March to the Nord, Nord? But is that the solo album that Demon Eyes released? Uh, this album is just amazing. Just the riffs are awesome. They sound like Immortal. Uh, Horg's drumming uh, is fantastic. As always, uh, always does lots of interesting fills and stuff that I enjoy. Uh, yeah, he just he just kills it. Uh, Demon Oz's vocals are just like venomous. Just like they sound awesome. Uh, I was I wasn't someone who disliked uh, Abbott's uh, more froggy whatever you want to say uh, kind of vocals, but man, Demon Oz, uh, his vocals are awesome. And I just come back to the riffs, man. These are just awesome, immortal riffs. Uh, album of the year right now. This is album of the year. Uh, I really didn't think that anything was going to come out and top Midnight Danger for me. Uh, but this did it. Uh, I have listened to this album many times uh, over this last week. And uh, it never gets old. Uh, right off the gates, Northern Chaos Gods, the title track. Just like Demon Oz and Horror, let us know, yeah, we're back and we sound like a mortal. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't even tell you uh, which songs, which song is my favorite, because uh, I always I'm like, yeah, maybe it's this one, but then I immediately think of of another one that I that I think is is my, is my favorite. Uh, definitely uh, top top tracks without putting them in any order. Uh, Gates to Bladrick, uh, Grim and Dark, Called to Ice, uh, 
honestly the whole album. The whole album. If you like any any of Immortals material throughout their entire discography, uh, definitely do not hesitate to check this album out. If you are worried at all that Immortal is going to dis- disappoint you, do not worry. They did not disappoint. They freaking knocked it out of the park. Uh, I-, I still can't even really uh, get over... How, how actually amazing this album is uh, you know it's kind of uh, you know we've been burned so many times in the past you know a band I don't know if they specifically said these kind of things uh, but it's sort of it's sort of that idea of you know bands that say oh this is this is back to our roots this is back to our early material you know and then you know it never really happens uh, like I said I don't know if the immortal said that but uh, but it's true with this release they freaking killed it uh, like I said, if you like Immortal, any of their stuff, don't wait. Stop this video right now, pause it, just X out of it, do whatever you gotta do, listen to the album now because of rules. Like, uh, like hardcore rules. Yeah. I'll stop gushing, but like I said, a million times already. Immortal, just, 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 just killed it. Awesome release, Northern Chaos Gods. Uh, couldn't be less disappointed. Uh, that's not even the correct phrasing. Less disappointed. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't. I shouldn't. Couldn't even expect more from this. Uh, it, it is so out, out, outrageously amazing. So yeah, Immortal, Northern Chaos Gods. I'm gonna stop. Check it out. All right. Uh, this five Immortal CDs out of the way. Uh, did the order with Hooftown Records. Uh, and let's show what I got. Uh, first up, uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, heavy metal band. Out of, I think they're out of Mexico. Uh, this is the self-titled EP uh, entitled, but from the band Thunder Slave. Uh, this was a uh, release released uh, last year on cassette uh, through uh, Hoofchild Records. Uh, obviously, this is the CD version, co-released uh, through a German label, Underground Power. Uh, this uh, version has two bonus tracks, uh, six total. Uh, the bonus tracks are an additional track by Thunder Slave, and then a uh, a cover of Trial by Fire, which off the top of my head right now I'm blanking on who that is by. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's by someone. Uh, just cool stuff. Uh, not, not my favorite band or anything like that, but a, ni- a nice, solid heavy metal release. The uh, the lead solo work is pretty strong. Uh, the vocals, kind of more, uh, almost kind of like uh, speed metally shouty kind of style, uh, but not, but not, not quite. Uh, yeah, just a solid, solid release. Uh, just uh, the, the CD came out this year. So yeah, good stuff. Thunder Slave, self-titled EP. Interested to hear uh, hear some more from these guys. Next up, uh, this is a release came out last year. I uh, just uh, never picked it up till now. Uh, this is Condor with unstoppable power. Uh, these guys are out of Norway, actually. I think Norway. I think uh, awesome uh, speed metal, kind of uh, more on the thrashy side as opposed to the heavy metal side, but definitely in that uh, that speed metal realm. Kind of funny because. Uh, Last year there was also a release by a Carry On Bird, Vulture. So all we needed was a band named Buzzard to release an album last year. So there was a there's a speed metal band out there in the world named Buzzard. You failed. I'm sorry. Uh, awesome release. Uh, killer riffs. Uh, yeah. If you if you if you actually if you're into that Vulture, this is uh, Vulture is a little more on the heavy metal side of the speed metal gamut. Whereas I said these guys are a little more on the uh, the thrashy side, but uh, they're close enough to probably, uh, if you're into one of them, you'll probably be into both. Uh, yeah, so good stuff. Finally happy to uh, finally pick this one up. It's uh, it's good stuff. Uh, particularly, I uh, like the track uh, Chained, uh, Chained Victims. That's probably my favorite track. I love Horrifier too, because he just uses the China symbol a bunch on that, on that, on that track. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, Condor, Unstoppable, Power. Uh, also picked up, uh, not for me, for my stack of tapes to give away. 
250, it's right around the corner, but it's in the 249. As soon as I hit the 250, I'll do some sort of giveaway. Uh, Pagan Altar, The Room of Shadows, uh, sort of wish it wasn't, uh, wrapped up, because, uh, it's kind of cool, like, I think it's a, a sticker label, but it, it, it's cool looking, and, uh, this is an awesome album, so it was a, I thought a good, worthy pickup for the stack. <clears throat> and then at the same time, I, uh, I, uh, sort of, uh, I, like, I left a message with my order saying, uh, I saw that you're releasing the, uh, the new Armory album on the cassette, and uh, if you're uh, getting rid of the test presses like he was uh, when I recently picked up the one for uh, for the Smolder release, uh, if you're getting if you're uh, if you're making those available anytime soon, I would love to uh, love to grab it. Uh, he actually messaged me back and said, "Yeah, uh, you know, gave me gave me the you know, same the same price as the other one." And I said, "Yep, send it my way." So. Uh, was able to pick up the uh, the test press for the uh, the new Armory album, The Search. Uh, had the CD on the way as well. That's released on High Roller, I believe. Uh, ordered it on Bandcamp directly from the band. Uh, awesome, awesome release. Uh, good stuff. Another uh, a good, solid release from this band. Um, no, these guys are out of Norway. I think maybe Condor is out of... Sweden. Or maybe they're Australian? No, actually, maybe these guys are Australian. It's bad. I, sh I should probably know. But yeah, actually, I think I think Armory's actually out of Norway. Uh, yeah, uh, good solid release. If you like the first one, you're going to like this one too. Uh, sticker. Button. Test press one of one. That's again. Uh, really like the one of ones on the test press. Makes it just a really cool collectible item. But yeah, it's cool to see uh, who Child start uh, releasing all these uh, cassette releases. Uh, definitely, I'm excited to pick up more of their stuff. And uh, like I said, they they released the CD too, so it's cool they're uh, getting into the CD game as well. Uh, but yeah, Armory. The search, uh, if you, like I said, if you like the first one, you're gonna like this one too. Uh, good, solid stuff. And I'll show off the CD when that comes in as well. So yeah, Armory, the search, and uh, thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. All right, uh, a few more CDs, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, this is a cool release. Uh, came across this one because on Bandcamp, uh, the album art is outstanding. That's what uh, piqued my interest. This is uh, Sleep Terror with an L Somn, which uh, translates to the insomnia. As you can see, this artwork is fantastic. If you're not familiar with this band, which I wasn't uh, before this release, even though they are out of Seattle, right in my neck of the woods, uh, they are a uh, technical death metal band. Uh, definitely has a high degree of uh, kind of like surf rock influence. Which actually my wife astutely pointed out. Oh yeah, you can tell because of the VW bus and the surfboard on the front. Obviously also the waves and stuff. Uh, a little bit kind of like of a loungy jazz kind of a sound to it too. Obviously super progressive. Uh, very wanky, which is what I love about the Test and Gold death metal aspect of it. Maybe a little deathcore too uh, if you want to get maybe technical with it. Uh, this is more of an EP, mini album, 20 minutes long. Uh, cool stuff. Uh, the transitions actually are, are fairly strong considering the sort of uh, disjointed seemingly uh, genres. Uh, but yeah, cool stuff. Definitely enjoy enjoy, enjoy this. Uh, his, his guitar playing, it's, it's basically essentially one guy, what's his name? Uh, Luke Je Jaeger. Uh, I think the drums were actually done by uh, yeah, Marco Pichuzella. Who you probably may know but yeah uh, just yeah awesome stuff uh, if you're into kind of a, a weird and you're into death metal techni technical stuff a little wanky uh, give these guys a shot it gets kind of cool and uh, yeah just I just just enjoy it it's cool it's you know if you don't like it, it's 20 minutes so it's over soon <laughs> but yeah definitely uh, 
maybe give these guys a shot because it's 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 good time. Uh, I'll show this off real quick. Talked about it last week when I uh, showed off the cassette that I got. This is a another actually Seattle band, uh, Oxygen Oxygen Destroyer with bestial manifestations of malevolence and death. This is a uh, kind of blackened a bit death metal band thrashiness. Uh, yeah, just good, good, solid, solid stuff. Uh, yeah, just the, the riffing's awesome. The vocals are uh, really solid. They're kind of more of the blackened uh, ish on the on, the, on the, the death metal, blackened death metal side of things with the vocals kind of rambling with this. Uh, cool stuff. I believe uh, the CD is self released. I did actually read. I think that. Uh, that uh, there is a reissue being done of the CD because it's kind of uh, sort of sold out here and there, maybe. But yeah, good stuff. Uh, I'll stop because I talked about this one last week. Ox- Oxygen Destroyer, Beast Show Manifestations, a Malone of Malevolence and Death. All right, so a couple more. Uh, awesome. Finally decided, to, glad to pick this one up because uh, this is one of those brand new bands where actually the CDs are sometimes harder to find than the vinyl. Uh, that's uh, Extortion with their album Sick. Uh, if you're not familiar with this band, they are a uh, power violence band out of Australia. So uh, sort of grind Corey. If you're not familiar with that genre tag, awesome stuff. Uh, always glad to pick up some Extortion. Uh, they are excellent, and uh, plus uh, the artwork they always have is just like uh, amazing. Uh, just want to, you know, pick up more and more, more and more, more, more and more of their stuff as I can. This is a uh, nice, blistering, 22-minute affair of just like outrageous blasting and uh, just aggressiveness. Uh, actually, it's not even actually really true because actually about uh, two-thirds of the way through, maybe about halfway, uh, we get to the song. Uh, what is it? Medica- medication. There's actually a nice, cool like. Uh, Head Bobby Riff in the middle of that one to kind of transition to the album because after that there's like a three, four, and a two minute long song. So there's actually sort of like a, a cool mid pacey uh, aspect to the latter half of this album, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, Extortion, awesome stuff. If you've listened to their other stuff, uh, you'll definitely like this one too. And uh, yeah, just need to pick up more and more of their stuff. Just uh, we'll be doing so uh, here and there. So yeah, this one is Extortion with Sick. All right, one more. Uh, this is one we're all probably going to know. Uh, I was prompted to finally pick up a copy of this album recently. Uh, I've been following a few a guy for a couple weeks now. Uh, was it Dude 1973, I think is his, is his uh, YouTube handle. Uh, seems like a cool guy. came across uh, him because... Uh, he had this uh, sort of uh, topic idea going through of uh, so ep- epic songs, which actually I need to do a video for still. Have the pile pulled out, just need to actually do the video. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the songs that he had on his list, uh, and God is kind of talking back and forth for a few comments, and uh, it was a, a song from an album that I needed, but just had prolonged putting off for years and years and years. And actually, I think this album came out, what, 20 years ago now? I think it was a 1998 release. Anyway, uh, Garage Inc. from Metallica. Uh, obviously, this is a release we all are pretty familiar with. Uh, Metallica, obviously, we all know. This is a, a double disc release of covers that they did. Uh, quite a few of these songs were singles. What uh, Bob Seger's "Turn the Page," uh, Wh- uh, "Whiskey in the Jar," "Thin Lizzy." Uh, those are actually the only ones, maybe. Actually, they were singles. And yeah, maybe those actually do- were the only ones. Anyway, uh, for the longest time, actually, I would say uh, I really only listened to like the second disc of this one, uh, which you know has mostly the the Garage Day revisited material. Uh, you know all the. Diamond Head tracks that we all know and love, Motorhead, Motorhead covers, uh, yeah, just for whatever reason, uh, I kind of just was, I think probably because that was the material that I was sort of already familiar with when this came out, 
Uh, so I, I just listened to that side for whatever reason, sort of ignored the first disc. Uh, and it wasn't for until like many, many years later, uh, early 2000s, that I, uh, I finally kind of round to uh, actually listening to the first disc of this release. And, uh, and uh, a number of the songs really uh, stood out uh, for me. Uh, notably, uh, the medley track, Merciful Fate, which is a number of Merciful Fate tracks uh, done in a medley, which Metallica just kills it. That was a song that was on Dude 1973's Epic Songs list. And yeah, that was a song that like uh, got me interested to check out who this band Merciful Fate was. You know, now the, the rest is history, Merciful Fate rules. Uh, love that band. Uh, also, uh, the song Die Die My Darling that prompted me to go out and buy the Misfits album uh, with that song on it. Um, yeah, and just the, there's tons of other songs on the first disc. Uh, they're awesome. Their their cover of uh, Black Sabbath Sabbathadabras is excellent. Uh, it's Electric, another Diamond Head song. Uh, is is that Diamond Head song? Is that like a maybe from some other band, The Prince or something? Maybe that's a song. Let me confirm that that's a Diamond Head. Song. I'm pretty sure it's Electric as a Diamond Head song. Let's find out if I'm dumb or not. Uh, somewhere in the in here, I'm assuming they'll be telling me who wrote these songs. Really? Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, Dime Head. Okay. It's electric. Awesome Dime Head cover by Metallica. Uh, and they do uh, Astronomy from Boys to Colts. Uh, Tuesday's Gone. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, Whiskey in the Jar, Turn the Page. Uh, I would actually say the only... Uh, one on the on the side that I don't actually am not really into that much is uh, what's the Nick Cave song Lover Man that's I'm not really into that one that much but uh, yeah just just uh, you know we all know this one nothing super amazing but uh, just kind of a, a cool release uh, of Metallica doing covers and, and generally speaking I think that Metallica does a really excellent job at covering other bands they do a good job of uh, you know making it uh, making it their own kind of song. And while still being uh, fairly, uh, uh, what's the, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't like destroy the original, or you know what I mean? Like, they don't like total, uh, totally just change the song out, uh, just like so it's a totally different song. But they, like I said, they do a good job of making it their own. And, uh, so yeah, uh, I was glad to finally, finally pick this one up slowly, filling in the, uh, the gaps on the, on the Metallica collection. Uh, what I got probably just uh, load, reload, send anger, death magnetic. And then what? Singles, just shit like that, which I don't really care about that much. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm at 27 minutes, 28 minutes now. Uh, let's uh, stop while we're ahead. Garage Inc., Metallica. Glad to finally pick it up. That's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, if you're familiar with any of these releases, please let me know what you think of them, and otherwise, have a fantastic day.